You've tuned in to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes. Your access to success strategies and more to help you move onward and upward with your life. Listen in each week as she interviews others who have really taken their essence to the next level and truly unpause their life. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Estes. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is Dr. Kelly Estes and I am founder of the Addictions Academy. The Addictions Coach and Rehab Rescue. Welcome to Unpause Your Life. This is a great podcast where we showcase people who have done something extraordinary with their life. I welcome you and I hope you enjoy all of our guests. On my way found a reason to wake up another day. You are listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Callie Estes of the Addictions Coach and the Addictions Academy. My guest today is Julie Marie Palumbo of Best Whole Self, and I want to tell you a little bit about her and her background. After spending 10 years in the financial industry and suffering from a chronic illness, Julie decided to pursue a career in what she had been passionate about for years, creating a better, healthier, and happier life. As a certified nutrition consultant and health coach, Julie inspires individuals who are on a mission to feel better physically and mentally in order to boost daily energy and productivity. She knows for a fact that it is important to reach the optimal level of both physical and emotional health because without one, we cannot enjoy the other. This has led to her personal motto, it is not about being skinny, it is about being your best whole self, for which her health coaching business is named. In addition to numerous public speaking engagements at companies like AstraZeneca, Athletica, and Morgan Stanley, Julie has also been featured on several podcasts, including iHeartRadio, Radio MD, and has served as a guest on MyNewPhilly.com, ReachMD, Disrupt ED TV, Phil17, and Times Square Today. She is also currently the host of Disrupt Health, an online TV program creating compelling conversations about health and wellness, and I was a lucky guest on there. So welcome, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we're glad to have you today. So tell me a little bit about what you do, who you are, and give our listeners kind of a a feel for a flavor of of how you transition from finance into health, because that's a big jump. It is. And as you mentioned, I was dealing with living this highly stressful life in the financial world, as well as managing a chronic illness, which is Crohn's disease. And anyone who suffers from an autoimmune disease or any type of IBD completely understands that stress and the disease do not mix well. And I essentially had the perfect storm of starting a new career in 2008, which in the financial industry was probably the worst time to start. And I was diagnosed that same year with Crohn's. So it was kind of like a snowball effect for the first few years of just constantly being in the hospital, trying medications that didn't work, going back to my day job because I had no time to take off. You know, they they were still expecting me to produce at a certain level. So it was very frustrating and very stressful on me. And I was going through this vicious cycle of being sick and stressed, and it was not until honestly 2013 that I decided that something had to change. And I realized that it was my lifestyle and my diet. And there's only so much that medication can do. I realized that the reason I couldn't find a medication that would work was because I was relying on it to fix all of my problems where that's not, that's not true. And that was not the solution. So I sought the help of a nutritionist. And I completely changed my diet. I went gluten-free. I started to incorporate acupuncture for stress management. I started to say no to certain obligations that I thought, you know, I could push myself and try to do a million things in a day. And by doing all of this, it really changed my life. And I was able to successfully reach remission a few years later. But as I was going through this lifestyle change, I thought, 
well, this is great that I'm being told what to eat and what to do to manage stress, but I wasn't being told how to do it. And it wasn't my nutritionist's fault. She just didn't understand the the lifestyle I had and the environment I had day to day. So I had to figure out how to incorporate this healthier lifestyle with a very demanding job and social life, because if anyone in the financial industry knows, entertainment is a big component of that. So I had to figure out how to do this seamlessly and not call attention to myself yet, make sure that I'm implementing these healthier habits and, and lifestyle change. So it was at that point, and this was in about 20, 2014, 2015, I thought, you know what, I could do a better job at this, uh, developing healthier programs for people who have a busy lifestyle and who live that corporate life who don't have the luxury of making breakfast at home every morning or maybe are home in time to make their own dinner and and just different things like that that I had to start doing. So I decided to become certified as a nutrition consultant and then as a health coach so that I could not only tell people what to do, but how to do it to integrate these healthy lifestyles. And I started working solely with people who had Crohn's, colitis, celiac, who suddenly had a completely new lifestyle and had to accommodate that. And it has since grown into working with those in the corporate world as well, because that's what I understand most. Um, and I quit my financial advising job last January, so January of 2018, because I just found this passion in instead of creating a financial plan for someone for their future, I was creating a health plan for someone in their future. And for as much as it seems like it's completely out of, you know, the left ballpark, I feel that planning for your health and financial well-being are very similar. So it was an easy transition for me as far as that is concerned. And as I said, it was a passion of mine because I saw that what I was implementing worked. It got me into remission. I had high energy constantly. And if it could work for me at the lowest level that I was with my health to bring me all the way back up to not only surviving, but thriving, then I could do that for anyone else. So that's when I launched Best Whole Self. As you noted, it was stemming from my motto, it's not about being skinny, it's about being your best whole self. Because I know for a fact that the number on the scale does not equate how healthy you are physically, emotionally, mentally, I think it, it's a complete component. You have to be holistically well. And that is what I promote through my health coaching and my online programs. Wow. So that's fascinating. So you went from creating financial plans to creating health plans. Did you find that more challenging or less challenging than financial planning? Because I find financial planning, I sort of pull my hair out when people say, oh, you have to put so much money in a bank account. I'm like, ugh. Yes. And actually, I found it, it's amazing for myself. I found it very easy. But for others, I think that because finances are such a concrete object, like they could see the money in, they could see how much it grows. It's very concrete. It's a little more difficult to convince them right now. If you start making healthier decisions now, 10 years from now, this is what your health will look like because people are very, they're all about quantifying things. Right. So one way that I shared with them kind of a, a parallel is when you're working, you're not spending all the money you're making and going out and having a good time. You're saving a portion of that in your 401k. So that down the road, you could retire and have a nice lifestyle. And the same is true for eating healthy. Maybe you're not going out and drinking and eating all these crazy foods and whatever your heart desires now, but down the line, you will be set up again, you know, in your 50s and 60s, you'll be in a better position. So I, I like to do a lot of parallels between health and finance. I think people really could conceptualize that better. And, and it really is, it's amazing how personalized every plan has to be for finance as well as each individual's plan for their health is, is customized because no two bodies are the same. So what works for one client will not probably work for the other. 
So we work together for a customized approach. And I absolutely love figuring that out. So it is like, so it's very similar to financial planning. So it's like, you know, you put X number of dollars in this bank account and it grows and 20 years from now you get to reap the rewards, which is as similar as, you know, changing something simple like stop drinking soda. And 20 years from now, Mm -hmm. you're going to see benefits. You know, you'll see benefits tomorrow. But 20 years from now, you're going to see no diabetes and you're going to see all these things. So it is very similar. It is. You're exactly right. And another way that it's similar is uh, when I do, I also do presentations at companies and I show a pie chart that is all components of your life. So it could be relationships, career, spirituality, fitness, home cooking, relationships, whatever it may be. And I explain to them, if you were to look at this as if it were money and you had a hundred thousand dollars, and you put $90,000 into your career, and you only had $10,000 left to spread amongst all these other parts, you would feel malnourished, and you would feel out of balance. And it's the same thing for our life. If we put, instead of saying 90000 if we put 90% of our efforts and time into our career, that leaves very little amount for the rest of things in life to enjoy. So sometimes certain things call for more of our attention during a given point of our lives or a different part of the year. But overall, you should rebalance and get that balance between not just work and life, but relationships and self-care and hobbies and things like that. So that's another way that it's very similar in finance is just like you want your portfolio to be diversified. You also want your energy and your life to be diversified. Right. Do you ever get any pushback from clients? Do they ever say, oh, this is just too hard. It's too complicated. You know, I have to change my food. I have to work out. I have to follow all this stuff. Or are they pretty receptive to the changes? To be honest, it depends on the client. And the, the biggest pushback, I would say, is the time management. And it's I always say it all the time, you know, it's such a finite resource time. You know, we can't roll over our unused minutes into the next day. And no matter who you are, you get the same amount of hours. But by working with my clients and creating kind of like a program that works for their lifestyle, they are able to implement these healthy habits seamlessly because it goes in the flow with what they're already doing. And I was then inspired to create a virtual program in which clients receive an email per day for 21 days, because that's how long it takes to create a habit. And they are all healthy tips when short on time. So it's called Busy But Healthy. And it's designed specifically for those who are short on time, but want to be healthy. So a good example is there are really quick, efficient workouts that are in the program that you could do at home, you could do in a hotel room, if you're someone who travels a lot, or you could do them at the gym if you have time. Um, they're also really healthy breakfast for those who are on the go. So like I said earlier, when I had a corporate job, I didn't have the luxury of making breakfast at home every morning. So I had to figure out how to do a healthy grab and go breakfast that wasn't a bagel or a muffin. So that's what this program also teaches ways that you could have any kind of meal on the go, but that is healthy. And it also is full of recipes that will keep your energy up so that you're not constantly relying on caffeine or sugar to get you through the day. So this was designed specifically for those who have said, I just don't have the time. And trust me, I I completely understand that. So it's very tailored to those who want to be healthy and just need to find those healthy, quick hacks to get that into their day. I love that because there's so many of us that struggle with what am I going to eat for breakfast, me included, and you wake up and you're like, you open the refrigerator and you stand there and you're like, I don't feel like cooking anything. And then it becomes, well, what do I make? And then it becomes, Mm -hmm. oh, what can I grab? And then it's running out the door with whatever's sitting on the counter. So that's a great idea to have something like that. How would our listeners find that? Like, where is that located? How can they access it? It is on my website, which is just bestwholeself.com under the programs tab. And that is on there as well as there's a 30 day gluten free program. So you get an email once a day for 30 days 
if you are trying out the gluten free diet or are actually are told that you have to live gluten free. And again, it's not just what to eat, but how to do it. Some things that are highlighted in there are how to go to a wedding gluten free and how to go to a sporting event, either at a bar or at the stadium itself being gluten free, um, as well as travel. I know that was a big anxious point for me was learning how to travel, especially internationally while being gluten free and making sure that other countries understood and I was able to eat while flying and things like that. So it's not just what to eat and what to avoid, but how to live just normal daily activities that we take for granted while having a new diet. And that one's actually 30 days because it, it does take a little longer to, to get over that learning curve of having a completely new diet. I need that. I'm gluten free, but trying to travel has been the absolute worst. Not just like you get to the airport at 5 a.m. and there's nothing open. Mm -hmm. And it's like your choices yeah. are a ham sandwich and chips. Like that's not even, yeah. you know, and then you get on the plane and the food they serve is just awful. And then you get where you're going mm -hmm. and it's like just a rush depending on where, you, where you're headed. I was in Utah last week and I couldn't find anything healthy. And I was in the middle of nowhere yeah. and I went to breakfast and I was like, I just want fruit and eggs. And the guy looked at me and he's like, fruit. I'm like, yeah. So he brought me a banana. I'm like, no, no, no. I want like cut up fruit, like berries. And he just looked at me. He's like, we don't have that. <laughs> wow. Mm, so it's but, so frustrating. Yeah. Learning how to do that would be very beneficial for someone like me who's always traveling and just, I'm always frustrated because it's like, what do exactly. I eat? So that's a great yeah. idea. And a lot of times to your point about not finding anything healthy when traveling are, is everyone's excuse that they couldn't stick to their gluten-free diet because the option wasn't there. And you are always in charge and have control over what you eat. It's just a matter of preparing ahead, maybe throwing your own snacks in your bag or whatever it is. But it takes some time to get used to that, especially if you're used to always just grabbing something on the way. And you're right. It is so impossible to find something healthy in the airport. The food on the airplane itself is just not exceptional at all and then depending on the destination you could really run into a hard time depending on where you're vacationing or traveling for work and another big part of it is if you're traveling for work and it's a convention where they're mass producing food it's oh, very yeah. hard to sometimes specify you know you have a certain diet and I have there's there's a whole section in there on just how to identify ahead of time what you can and cannot eat and kind of navigate around that because I've seen too many people just eat whatever so that it's convenient to those around them and they suffer for it and they get sick and it doesn't have to be that way. It just takes a little planning and strategizing and, and you could definitely do it successfully. So I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great that you have that. So Tell our listeners how to find you. We're going to put up all your links and everything, but how can they find you? How can they access the app, which I'm going to hop on as soon as we're off of here and check out because I absolutely need it. And how can they contact sure. you to hire you? Uh, they could just go to my website again, bestwholeself.com. Uh, there is a place for you to email me directly or to set up a complimentary 45-minute conversation where we could identify your goals and what you're looking to achieve. And then we would pick a program that is, perfect for you. So I typically work with clients in four, eight, and 12-week programs because that's how long it takes to make little adjustments to your lifestyle to stick, to make sure that becomes a true healthy habit and not just a diet. Um, and also on the site, as I mentioned before, the programs uh, page has all of the virtual programs. So those are for anyone who's looking to get daily emails that they could follow along at their own pace and implement their new lifestyle, that is absolutely perfect for them to do it that way instead of the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, wonderful. And I'll make sure that's all up for everybody to access so that they can reach out to you. And um, Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. And I want to thank you so much for coming on our show. And any takeaways that you could give somebody that's looking for – a transition from an unhealthy lifestyle to a healthy lifestyle, what's a, a takeaway that they could try on their own? I really think that the first thing that they could do is practice mindfulness when deciding what to eat. 
And as I mentioned before, you are always in control over what you eat. No one can ever make you eat something. So if you're going to decide, I want to live a healthy lifestyle, it starts from that moment when you make that commitment. And then everything going forward, just if you could pause before you eat something and think, is it going to nourish me and fuel me? Or is it just going to fill a space or a void that I'm trying to satisfy? And by just pausing and really thinking about the impact of what you eat and if it's going to have a short-term or a long-term effect on your body and what that is, is really critical. Because once you start changing your mentality about how you eat and how you approach nourishment and nutrition, that is when you will truly step into a healthy lifestyle as opposed to just a diet. And it will be long-lasting and effective. Wow, that's such a good takeaway, too. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. And I'll let all of our listeners know, and we'll tweet everything out for you so that they have access to you, because I think you're such a valuable resource. We get a lot of people that are looking to make the lifestyle change and need the accountability and need the help, but don't want to do it themselves and also need the structure, which is awesome. So thank you so much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope that I could help as many people as possible to truly step into the lifestyle, not only they that they want, but that they deserve. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And you have been listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes and my guest today, Julie Marie Palumbo. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening. I really hope you enjoyed the show today. Head on over to iTunes and Apple Podcasts and leave a comment or review of what you think. Or contact us at 1-800-706-0318. If you want to be on our show, feel free to email or call. And if you have a topic, feel free to email or call as well. Thanks for listening to Unpause Your Life. For show notes and more, head on over to unpauseyourlife.com. Big shout out to recoveryinnovators.com for help producing this show. Thank you, guys. I took a walk down the long road The weather said that I shouldn't go On my way found a reason To wake up another day But they needed to show you All the things that you won't do Faith or religion But nothing to show for it No need to Down the dark road Where they said that I shouldn't go I knew the dangers of flying Now I'm so far from silent ground But they needed to show you All the things that you won't do Find faith or religion But nothing to show for Yeah.